In the 21st century, almost every human activity is supported by various technologies. In education, we have seen how our increasing options make it possible for the majority of educational settings to operate with and through some form of technology. The diverse options in the digital age, however, also bring an increasingly complex concern on designing for learning. Towards the end of this resource, you are encouraged to reflect on the design principles and guidelines for developing a more flexible learning environment in HE through its programs and courses. For this lecture, I will touch on the potential of technology use for higher education, make a case for embracing learning design as the latest iteration of instructional design in developing and implementing higher education programs and courses, and present two broad design features to be adopted if the goal is to have a more flexible teaching and learning environment. Education experts and organizations like UNESCO have acknowledged innovations in technology as important drivers of education. But while countries from the Global South continue to face challenges in providing access to technological services, it would be remiss to disregard the potential of what has been and what is increasingly being made available. In the Philippines, the 2023 and early 2024 reports from Electronics Hub and Data Reportal presented more than 70% internet and social media users. Our people also consistently spend longer time on phones, social media, and gaming. Noting these seemingly simple data, Shouldn't we be more open to the idea that the potential power of digital technologies can be harnessed to be of proper use in education? However, increasing technology use for education does not mean that students can always be left to their devices. Instead, teachers play a more distinct role in scaffolding the way students think and how they develop the new kinds of skills they will need for the digital literacies. As one educationalist, Diana Lorillard, puts it, which is why instructional design, or the current form learning design, remains critical. ID is defined as the analysis of learning and performance problems, and the design, development, implementation, evaluation, and management of instructional and non-instructional processes and resources intended to improve learning and performance in a variety of settings. Aside from being a discipline in itself, ID can be viewed in three ways. It is the systematic process of planning and managing quality instruction, informed by learning theories to achieve learning. Perhaps because of the iterative nature of the process, it can be viewed as the science of creating detailed specifications for the development, implementation, evaluation, and monitoring of situations that facilitate learning of content. But despite being a process with detailed steps, the reality is that an ID or LD work can begin at any point in the design. In looking at LD as a process, there needs to be a form of six categories of activities or practices. Regardless of the curriculum design model that the institutions adopt, be it Gagne's event of instruction, the ADI model, or backward design, for example. There needs to be a form of analysis of learning needs and goals. It includes designing for learning through the development of learning materials and activities within a delivery system that can meet these learning needs, and a pilot run and evaluation of all instruction and learner activities. For the remaining parts of this presentation, the LD activity or practice will be reviewed as learning design procedures within the HE setting and with emphasis on how instructional media and technologies may come into the picture. Whatever teaching and learning environment one may have or would like to foster in relation to technology use in education, there needs to be a form of analysis of learning and performance problems. Among many best practices, you will have to see whether the learning needs of the current and previous students or graduates are analyzed. Look into the discussion about attempts to reflect on institutional context, including current resources, 
support systems, and educational and teaching philosophies to see how these influence the design decisions. You may also access reports of how disciplinal, national, and global HE frameworks are considered in the design. When it is time for the design and development phases of the work, and even when reviewing programs and courses, regardless of what and how technology will be used, the principles of designing good teaching and learning should be clarified and or evident. When developing or reviewing programs and courses, at least two ideas should guide teachers in making wiser technology choices. First is to align technology with pedagogy. And second, focus on what students will do with the technology and or media. First is on aligning technology with pedagogy. LD principals would always advocate for pedagogical purposes to drive the form of solutions to challenges in designing for learning while also acknowledging that the choices of technological resources are important, as they may influence how one learns in a digital age. This implies that HEIs should still be guided by earlier lessons and best practices in curriculum and course design, such as OBE and the adoption of different OBE approaches and models. For example, constructive alignment or CA can still inform the design if the focus is on what and how students are to learn. The design still has to clarify what is to be learned or the topic, how it is to be learned, and to what standard. The relevant learning resources and media forms in learning the topic, and the things that will inform that students have learned that topic must be stated. And these can be addressed in the Teaching Learning Activities, or DLAs, and in the assessment task or AT. In the same manner, if the design model is informed by backward design, the desired results should still be stated clearly, which can then lead to identifying what evidence or proof that the desired results have been achieved. And making plans for how teachers can help the students maximize the learning experience to demonstrate or produce the proof of learning. All these stages will inform how the various media and technologies, from low to high, soft to hard technologies, and single and richer media, can help in the design of the learning experience. Second is on what students will and can do with the technology or media. Given that different media have different educational effects or affordances and can help facilitate different ways of learning. In recent years, there has been a push for a more flexible, higher education teaching and learning environment. Because the learners are diverse, and if the concern should be about what they do and what helps them learn, then there needs to be an exploration of how open and flexible the design for learning can be. One useful guide is the ABC Learning Design developed at UCL informed by Lorillard's Conversational Framework Model of Adult Learning. Each learning activity type, from acquisition to production, represents a cycle of interaction between learner, teacher, and peers. And an exploration of how various media and technologies may help foster a learning type. In some forms of adopting the ABCLD as a design tool, Principles from the Universal Design for Learning, or UDL, has been incorporated. UDL is a framework to improve and optimize teaching and learning for all people based on scientific insights into how humans learn. In adopting UDL, the principles of multiple means of engagement, representation, and action and expression are shown in the design of any programs and courses as a way to be more flexible and accommodating of diverse learners. So what are examples of the concrete UDL guidelines and checkpoints? First is on providing individual choice and a level of independence among learners, at least in terms of choices in the learning challenge, rewards or recognition available, tools used to gather information or produce a learning output, and the timing for completion of tasks, among others. 
Next is on the alternatives or options in how students may perceive and understand any information or content presented through various media forms and any signposts or guides to help process such information. Another design consideration in a technology-mediated, flexible teaching and learning environment is on the use of single media, for example, a text-based article to read or a podcast, to rich media such as interactive videos, multimedia presentations, or an entire course site accessible via mobile phones. This continuum from Bates is just one of the examples in classifying media and technologies. But the key takeaway is that a vast array of media with distinct potential for affordances is accessible for educational purposes. The educational design and situational use of technology will determine whether the media affordances and distinctive qualities will be maximized. The tendencies, attitudes, and preferences of the students may also hinder or help the effective use of particular affordances of various media. Overall, the dimensions of each media and technology must be evaluated against the learning outcomes while recognizing the potential of a previously unexplored medium or application to achieving these same outcomes in a more efficient but meaningful way. The concern covers three things. What the students must and can do in any learning setting to achieve a desired outcome. How, if possible, a technology in media can help them achieve an outcome in a more relevant, engaging, and authentic manner. And lastly, how teachers adopt an organized method to shape students' learning while still developing the students' self-directedness. As for the second half of the practices in an LD process, one basic reminder is to look into whether a decision model is established, informed by relevant institutional and national policies, standards, and guidelines, as well as quality assurance, quality enhancement, and accreditation frameworks. This decision model is helpful for identifying whether 25 or 50% of the teaching and learning shall occur fully online at a distance through guided independent study of modules or any form of blend and which DLAs shall be done synchronously and asynchronously. With all these six acts accomplished, a program, course, or unit of learning can be successfully planned and developed, if not in a refined and complete form, at least in a way that will encourage learning more and learning deeply. Any advancements in technology will not alter this but only enrich the students' and teachers' options, noting that the students can get the information and the tools to access information and generate knowledge even when outside the formal class. I hope this lecture can help guide you in analyzing any HE program or course in terms of how they are designed if the goal is to ensure that they are indeed designed to optimize learning in a technology-mediated, flexible learning environment.